was the signal. It just came out of the hole right up underneath here. Well, today I'm going to work on cleaning up these little lead World War I figurines that I found in uh, Boise, Idaho just a week or so ago. I'm super excited to clean them up because I was able to track down the family of the original person who played with these toys. He's since passed, but um, he played with them as a child in his sandbox in the backyard. And then when his kids got older, uh, when his kids were born, uh, they also played with the same toys in the toy box. And I spoke with one of his daughters who was surviving and she was so excited to hear that I'd found them and recalled playing with these very figurines in the sandbox in their backyard when she was a child. And so hoping to get these nice and clean so that when they arrive in the mail that um, they look the best that they possibly can. And so we're going to give it a, a couple of uh, tries at cleaning them. One, just warm soap and water. Secondly, I'm going to try using the um, ultrasonic cleaner. I will do a test on one of the small pieces first to make sure it doesn't do anything destructive to them. And then uh, if need be, we'll use a, an ultrasonic toothbrush as well to get them cleaned up and then we'll get them off in the mail to their original owners. So this little um, ultrasonic cleaner came from Harbor Freight. I think it was maybe $40 or something of that sort. It uh, came with this ultrasonic general purpose cleaner, which looks like has uh, sodium carbonate and sodium metasilicate and trisodium phosphate. So I've put a small amount in some warm water in here. We're going to set this to 480 seconds, and we're going to go ahead and let it do its thing. You may be able to hear it vibrating. Let's take a quick look. Turn, uh, turn the objects over. This is just our test run to see how it does in terms of cleaning those. All right, our 480 seconds are up. Bring this guy out here. See how he looks. And he's still wet, so it's hard to talk. I, can, I think I can see a little bit of kind of dirt right in here still. But we'll rinse him off and see how he looks. Well, let's take a quick peek here. The first guy. Uh, in line is one that's not been cleaned yet, just just uh, wiped off. The second one has been washed with soap and water, and the third just came out of the ultrasonic cleaner. So it definitely looks cleaner. Uh, we'll, now we'll give a uh, uh, ultrasonic toothbrush cleaning a, a try with the first guy in line here and see how he compares to the others. Okay, so I replaced uh, the little guy that was with the broken feet, actually this guy was here. So I replaced him with this guy just to show the, how dirty they were originally. This is one that I've washed with just soap and water by hand. This was in the ultrasonic cleaner. And this, I used the same uh, water from the ultrasonic cleaner, just that dissolved uh, TSP powder mix and a, um, just an ultrasonic toothbrush. Gave it a, oh, maybe 30 second cleaning. And um, yeah, it turned out pretty pretty nice. I'd say just for these guys, probably putting them all in the ultrasonic cleaner is going to be the, the easiest, and because uh, the results between these two are, are uh, really not very noticeable to me anyway. So that's what we'll do. I'll put all of these in there and um, show you a before and after picture. All right, there's our little before video. Got them in here. Uh, I've got them set out so they're not touching each other. I don't really want them vibrating against each other. And I'll admit I'm a little nervous about the boat that has a little bit of paint on it in the airplane. So as this is vibrating right now and cleaning, you can notice the water begins to get a little bit uh, brown and a little bit cloudy. And if you um, 
you watch closely, it's mostly happening in the middle. It seems like the, the objects in the middle tend to get a higher concentration of the, I don't know, the ultrasonic waves or whatever. But in any case, it is right in front of us removing at least some of the surface dirt. All right, 480 seconds later. Let's see uh, how we're looking here. Huh. That boat actually... I can actually see the paint better than uh, before. Looks like none of the paint came off, but a lot of the dirt did. Let's see about the airplane here. Airplane in here. There we go. How's that one looking? Yeah. Okay. Well, you can see how the water is turned brown, so obviously some dirt's come off of these guys. I think I may rotate them, flip them over. Uh, and do them again just to let the dirt that's settled on top vibrate off of there as well perhaps but we'll uh, give you a look at the, um, the after photos okay that's after our second 480 second run ship looks a little cleaner but I'm gonna just leave it at that and uh, take these guys yeah they're definitely brighter I'll take them out rinse them off and then see how they look compared to the original uh, ones before they were cleaned Well, here we are. Uh, this is the final sort of cleanup of these guys. Uh, put them through two cycles at 480 seconds in the ultrasonic cleaner. And they came out pretty good, really, I think. Not perfectly clean, but in pretty decent shape, really. Also took the ultrasonic toothbrush and cleaned them as well a little bit. There's still some dirt on here, but I, I don't... I don't want to work too hard on these. They're, they are, I think, a little fragile. feel pretty happy with how the ship came out. Paint that was on there is still on there. Now it's clean and you can see it. Same with the airplane. came out okay. Some detail came out on this guy. It was pretty covered in dirt before, so I'm happy with the way that turned out. Yeah, and overall, I'm, I'm pretty excited. While I was doing this, I got a phone call from one of the other surviving children of the original owner of these who was a little boy when he played with them back in the um, I think late 20s early 30s and uh, she's excited to see these and ultimately as they make their way from one sibling to the next uh, they'll make their way hopefully down to the surviving great-grandchildren and they can hear stories about how the great-grandfather played with these little guys between the two wars and a little piece of family history will be back in the family's hands. Well, I admit I had a lot of fun finding these little toy soldiers, but I'll also say that really the best part of the whole thing is tracking down the family that originally owned and played with these and knowing that they'll be a part of the family's history that gets to be passed down to the grandkids and so on. So grateful for that and I just want to say Always remember, the treasure you find is not just what you dig, but it's in the moments and the people you meet. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.